Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part 20. Injector and whistle piping. Fitting steam piping to a model steam locomotive is not as easy as it first appears. When doing a job like this, you have a couple of simple rules that you really have to follow. You must always silver solder the union cones onto the pipe, never use soft solder, because the steam is far too hot at the pressures that these boilers work at. And if you inadvertently kink the piping when bending it, just get another piece of pipe and start again. This is the live steam injector. I don't really know whether this works or not, it hasn't been tested. If it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world because it's a very simple job to use a Jubilee fittings injector as they're more or less the same size. I know this looks a little bit like a trombone, but that's the way it is. I have to get the steam pipe down to the injector and there are a few things in the way such as the drain cock lever and the footstep. Originally, there wasn't a footstep in this position, but one of the people at the steam workshop made one, so I felt obliged to fit it. I really have shortened this sequence because it took quite a long while, and most of the video was me wrestling with these pieces of piping with my hands in the shot, and it took quite a lot longer than you see here. It's most important that the injector is in the correct position, none of the pipes are kinked, and basically looks okay when it's all fitted together. Here's a top tip. It's a good idea when doing jobs like this to have a flat piece of stone on the bench next to you. A piece of stone? What's the point of a piece of stone? Well, it's very simple. If the job is not going very well, which frequently jobs like this don't go very well, you can at least bang your head on the piece of stone on the bench. And the good thing is that if you repeatedly bang your head on the stone on the bench, it will render you unconscious. Health and safety warning, that was a joke. I do not recommend banging your head on pieces of stone, whether it be on the bench or anywhere else. In this clip, you can see the layout of the injector. And as you can see, the injector is only supported by the piping. The steam inlet pipe from the turret, the outlet pipe to the clack, and the water inlet valve, which is not yet connected. And that's what I'm about to do. There's a piece of pipe that goes to the injector water inlet and this is connected in turn to a water tap so you can regulate the flow of the water. The water for this injector is not going to be taken from the side tanks because they're very small and they're right next to the boiler so the water will get too hot and the injector just won't work. So I'm piping up an external water feed. The water will come from a tank on the riding truck. So on the engine I have to make up a short piece of copper pipe which fits to the water valve and then sticks out of the back of the engine to take a flexible pipe. And for this I milled a piece of brass and I used the wonderful Bridgeport milling machine at the steam workshop. I really do want one of these, if only I could fit it in my home workshop. For the moment I'll just dream about such things. This piece of brass that I milled on the Bridgeport milling machine is going to clamp this pipe to the side of the frames. I marked out and drilled and tapped the brass block to accept two 4BA bolts which hold the brass block against the frame and also clamp the pipe at the same time. Any e-glide viewers will notice that when I first put the block on the frame I had the nut at the wrong side, oh dear oh dear, but I kept calm and I didn't panic, I just removed the block and moved the nut to the right side of the pipe and put it back in place. To be perfectly honest the nut is not really required, you can simply slide a piece of silicone rubber tubing onto the pipe and it won't come off because the union cone on the end of the pipe will hold it in place securely. But I fitted a union nut onto the pipe so that the future owner of the engine has the choice between a piece of silicone rubber tubing or a more secure type of water connection. Well, it's a sad day at the steam workshop. I cannot get my barco spanner into this position, so I'm just using a very small 4BA spanner instead. And here's the finished injector job. I straightened up the piping somewhat, and as you can see, everything's where it needs to be, and it's quite secure. Nothing's going to fall off as the engine runs along the track. The second part of this piping job is much simpler. I'm just piping the whistle. I've bent the piping so that it goes through the gap just behind the wheel. And I've bent the piece of steam pipe that goes from the whistle valve down to the whistle so that it clears the wheel, and at no time can it ever contact the wheel even if the track is uneven and the engine's wheels are bouncing up and down. I'm currently working on one of my engines, if you've been watching the series. It's a Chinese-made Great Western Railway 14XX locomotive. And on that, the main water feed from one of the side tanks was nearly worn through because one of the wheel flanges was rubbing against it. 
but that's not going to happen in this case because there's plenty of clearance. In this clip I'm fitting the whistle. I can't just leave the whistle hanging loose like this because the weight of the whistle would pull the pipe down into contact with the wheel, so I'm going to fit a bracket at the other end of the whistle. Originally on this engine the whistle was just dangling about underneath the cab, but it's not a good idea, everything needs to be secured. In this clip it appears that the pipe is very close to the wheel and that's just because the whistle is not yet in the right position. I need to make a bracket at the other end of the whistle to hold it permanently in a fixed position against the main frames. When fitting whistles to model steam locomotives you must make sure that the opening points down. This is to drain the water so the whistle doesn't gurgle. In this clip I'm showing that I'm going to make a bracket to hold the whistle securely in place using one of the buffer beam bolts. So it's starting to look a little bit like a steam locomotive and the suspension's working. Before finalising the suspension I need to fill the boiler with water and the side tanks and just check that the engine sits level and adjust the suspension where necessary. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.